Hello. So what if you could light up soccer fields without tapping into the electrical grid? What if you could charge cell phone when there's no power plugs? What if you could pay for a cup of coffee by just jumping up and down? Uh, not just being mere fantasy, these are actually things that have been realistically realized using the same scientific foundation called piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity is a technique or it uses a material that converts footsteps into electricity. Okay, so, but what is this piezoelectricity? How does it work? What does stomping have to do with electricity? Digging into these questions allowed me to get exposed to this really exciting learning experience of how human ingenuity was applied to use scientific foundation to address dire or maybe not so dire societal needs. So I have a small wish. I'd like to share this fun and exciting side of science with very uh, broad uh, audiences to general people who's really not into science, young or old, even if it's just for their sake of fun or curiosity. However, when I try to talk about science to people, I can tell I'm very far from this goal because my polite audiences are generally suppressing their yawns all teary-eyed. So, what can I do? The idea that I'd like to share with you today, stemming communication with a canvas, seeks to use or borrow the power of art to communicate science. Art is a great way to convey complex scientific con concepts using visual intuition, interactive appeal, and furthermore, it doesn't need the use of art jargon that very often disconnects your audience from the context. For example, let's say I wanted to talk about a new approach to tuning carbon ultramicropore size at sub angstrom level for maximizing specific capacitance and CO2 uptake. Would you have any idea of what I'm trying to talk about? On the other hand, please take a look at this picture. This is a cover of a scientific journal called Advanced Functional Material that was published last year. The title of the article that was published or featured in this cover is just what I told you. A new approach to tuning carbon ultramicropore size at sub angstrom level for maximizing specific capacitance and CO2 uptake. I'd like you to imagine that these acorns represent CO2, carbon dioxide, that are floating in the air around you. You might have heard that high concentration of CO2 or carbon dioxide has been related to global climate issues such as uh, greenhouse effects or acid rain. The authors of this article have found a way to dig tiny, tiny barrows or holes into these materials using ions represented here as green and yellow blue sphere. The trick here is that these spheres, the size of these spheres are very, very close to the size of these acorns, which represents CO2. What this allows you to do, the precise matching of the size enables the CO2 to fit very snugly into these holes and get basically stored in the material, just like how acorns get snugly buried into the ground by the squirrels. My point is, doesn't this picture do a much better job of conveying the essence of this work rather than this wordy technical description? So, um, switching gears a little bit. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, commonly abbreviated as, as STEM, is also combined with art, abbreviated as STEAM. Generally, when people talk about STEAM, that is an approach of trying to introduce STEM students to art classes to enhance their innovative thinking skills and creativity. The STEAM that I'd like to present or propose here today is actually trying to tap into the power of art to help us become a better missionary of conveying the fun and excitement sci side of science. I have been very fortunate to meet talented, wonderful teachers at Rochester, high school teachers listed here, who has agreed to try and join me in trying out this experiment. So our approach follows as follows. 
So for the first step, I stand in front of the high school students and I give a presentation to show the power of artistic communication. It goes very similar to what I just talked about. I give them the cover of a journal, scientific journal and talk about how this allows me to talk about complex scientific context without really going into jargons. My presentation is then followed by a presentation by an art teacher at the high school. I just copied three bullet points from an art teacher at Brighton High School based on her presentation that she gave. She first talked about inspired design, basically trying to communicate or teach the students on how to <coughs> use, sorry, how to use shapes and patterns to give them a visual appeal. The next bullet point, she talks about making a statement. So here she describes how you can show, use your artistic projects to get your viewer to think or feel very deeply. And the final bullet point, make it personal. She challenged the students to use the project and connect to it with their own experiences and beliefs. So now the students have some idea of what art can be used to convey science. They also know some ways that artists use to bring their concepts or ideas into artistic presentation. Then I go back to the stage and discuss some basic fundamental principles of scientific applications or scientific mechanism. Let's take the piezoelectric material uh, example, which I actually talked about to the students last year at Brighton High School. The piezoelectric material in its natural normal form has some atoms that are positively charged and negatively charged. When you don't stomp on it, basically these charges, these atom charges are uniformly distributed within the material. When you, when you stomp, these materials get squeezed and that squeezing distorts the atom's alignment in the material and what you have is some side becomes a little more negatively charged here on the left, some side becomes a little more positively charged. In a bulk material, you have a lot of these uh, distribution occurring and the effect of stomping becomes pretty significant. So if you actually connect this to a wire, you can have the electricity moving and actually harvest the electrical energy. So in a nutshell, this is how piezoelectricity works. So I give a presentation like this to the high school students. And the last step, or the step four, is the key. We actually challenge the students to make artistic pro projects based on anything, anything as long as it's even remotely related to the piezoelectricity. So here we first group the students. What happened here, we have some art students and students from general physics grouped together. And we also go through some brainstorming exercises as shown in the photo on the left. And through these exercises, we see what kind of things that the students took from the message. The student on their side, they get to learn about it. They they study about the material and they put this all together. Some students took the sustainable energy aspect of the topic. Some students took the mecha mechanism of the piezoelectricity. Some students took it all the way into just generic aspect of energy conversion, say from footsteps to electricity. And finally, we wrap this hot thing, hot, we wrap this up by exhibiting their art project in an art exhibition <coughs> event at Brighton High School. I'd like to share some of their creative projects with you. This one, titled Energy Glow by Malik and Emerson, shows the boot that represents the piezoelectric motion. The small script here are some copies that I took from their art artist statement. Basically, they're trying to show how the piezoelectricity works, but they're also trying to communicate the need for sustainable energy to light up the world. This next whimsical creativity by, called Like a Battery by Jason and Jono. They are trying to show the mechanism of piezoelectricity by showing how you can create the non-uniformity in piezoelectric material by using a stretching and bending person as an analogy. This is actually a very common piezoelectric mechanism when materials are long and they're shaped like a wire. In this case, instead of squeezing, just by bending generates the distribution of charges to create the piezoelectric effect. We also had a lot of poster-based art projects. 
this one called Electricity by Jared and Jake, shows how a person here, he is standing on a piezoelectric tile in the center, and by standing on it, he's creating light showed by the light of electrical bulb. <coughs> but you also see there are many people standing on be behind in lines. They're basically waiting for their turn. Their message is that people need to work together to power our world sustainably. The final example that I'd like to share with you is an example of how some of the students took it in a unique way. This project called Paper Mache Volleyball by Ben and Maria shows how different forms of energy can actually interrelate. They took pictures of different forms of energy such as photosynthesis, food, firecrackers, and mussels, and they mashed it up into a shape of a volleyball to show how they interconnect. <clears throat> this also gave kind of a personal connection to one of the artists, Ben, who is a dedicated volleyball player. So they took the message from the art teacher to make a statement, but they also wanted to make it personal. So in summary, we had great feedback from all these projects, and this, this is a comment of some of the feedback that we had, saying very fun and different and creative way of learning science. This can benefit us in helping to understand difficult concepts. Everyone involved had a good time, which is the whole point. <clears throat> I think all these comments suggest that we were able to offer an effective but a little different way to convey scientific concepts to general audience, including the younger generations. We also had a very positive side effect that I wasn't really expecting, as shown in this last comment here, we, the teachers of different disciplines like art and physics, normally don't work together. And this project has been a great opportunity to break that wall. It was a nice effect that we had that I didn't expect, basically allowing us to learn and be exposed to different expertise and disciplines. So, where do we go from here? What I would like to hope this would evolve into, or what I wonder is whether this approach can be actually used to communicate research done by people who are deaf or hard of hearing. We can actually take their topic, or they can take their topic, and communicate with the high school students. The high school students can take their research topics and create a project like this. That way, this approach not only connects the STEM disciplines to the general public, but it might also be able to bridge the hard of hearing or the deaf community with the community who are hearing. And if that becomes a reality, maybe that's another idea worth sharing. Thank you very much.